Yo, what's good? What's popping? Hey, over the last 24 hours, there's been a lot of people who have had a lot to say about the comments that I made on my sports show, Fourth and One. Some true, some not so true, some subjective. All of it is still opinionated at the end of the day. I think the thing that I have a problem with is address the point that I made, not me. And I think oftentimes that happens in regards of athletes trying to make their point. It's easy for somebody to say, move past the outfit for a second. So he's talking about all these NFL game managers. He sounds like the people literally tweeting at me from their basement, like get back in the kit. Like, it's like you are at home. When he does this podcast or whatever it was, this is just wacky stuff. You know, like this, what, Cam, you, you you know more football than that, this? right? It's called Funky Friday. That's his podcast. Because that's absurd. When he said Dak's name, I was like, <laughs> he telling jokes. First, first right of all. But the first point that I want to make here is this. Identifying the difference between a game manager and a game changer. Game manager is not a negative connotation. Ken, what do you mean by game manager? My definition of that managing player is a player who has the ability to make the right play at the right time, protecting the football at all costs. There's times in my career where I figured this out. Sometimes, Cam, you don't have to take over a game. Allow other players to do that. If we're getting personal here, there was times in my career where I did it, and there's times in my career where I didn't do it. When I think about ultimate elite game managers, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, game changer and game manager is not something where I'm saying, this person is not physically capable of making some great plays. I'm not saying that. Or I am not saying that they're not good players. There's really only three to potentially five game changers in the NFL right now. Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes. Chris Canty, I was listening to what he was ha having to say, and he used this as an analogy. A game changer is a truck. A game manager is a trailer. A truck pulls a team together and pulls and is the reason why this team is having success. A game manager is merely a trailer that's attached to something to make it go. When I see a guy like Brock Parody, yes, did he make hell of a throws? Yes, is he making elite decisions? Yes, but he's putting it in guys like Debo Samuels and Christian McKay. Like that's that's the point. When you think about those teams, first thing I think about with the Cowboys is the defense. Is Dak Prescott playing lights out ball right now? Hell yeah. But the first thing I think about is the lights out defense. When I think about the Miami Dolphins, it's Tyreek Hill. It's not Tua. That's not to say Tua's not having a great season. When I think about the 49ers, it's not Brock Purdy. This is Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuels, that unbelievable defensive line. Kyle Shanahan, who's calling his ass off with, with just putting the schematics in place. These are guys I fuck with. These are people who I respect. Being a game manager is not something that it's a backhanded compliment. A game changer is this. As an organization going into the off season, our main pick or our main emphasis on trying to decide a quarterback is, oh man, we gotta go find us another A-Rod. The next Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, or Lamar Jackson. And this may make a lot of people feel a certain type of way, but it's the truth. I don't see people going into the draft as executives of franchises. They don't say I'm going into the draft to find another Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, the Tua Tonga Valoa. Remove you from that source and does that team still be successful? Most of those players that I named, those, those teams will still be successful in some way, shape, form. I'm not bashing anybody, but sports media outlets have been doing that for years. Why do you say that, Cam? I'm looking at a guy by the name of Burt Mangus, head guy over at ESPN, Norby Williamson. These people have been at ESPN for 29 years, 38 years, speaking on topics of sports that is dominated by, obviously, athletes. Now let's go into Fox. Undisputed. That's ran by a guy by the name of Eric Shanks and also Charlie Dixon. 29 years, by the way, that he's been there and Eric and eight years with Fox as well, Charlie Dixon. They've been able to identify this merit that when I do it, it's a problem. But when the major networks do it, oh, that's just how it goes. So when I sit up here and I make 
a bold statement or speak on something which I actually lived, it's like discredited. No, he don't know. He's just mad. No, no. I'm not going for that. And I'm not going to keep going for that. But you got major networks still talking about a player who hasn't played in roughly two and a half, three years. <laughs> I mean, who's doing that? And you will want the narrative to be all oh, Cam bitter, all oh, Cam mad, or Cam hating on Dak, or Cam hating on Brock, or Cam just mad that he's not in the. Let's stop that, Lewis, Kimberly, Colin. Like, let's stop that. And most of the people who had their two cents to say something about Cam and his outfits and his hats and his ego and his pride are merely just guys or gals and can be and probably will be replaced harsh but it's the truth people who i've had the utmost respect for that are no longer with major networks the sage steels the carrie champions the josina andersons the jalen roses the michael smiths the jamil hills the chris carters right because respectfully, before Shannon Sharp, there was Chris Carter. You take Stuart Scott off of ESPN, God rest his soul. It's a different show. You take Shannon Sharp, Eric, off of Undisputed, it's a different show. These guys are game changers. The reality of it all is I respect all commentators who has an opinion about a game that they've never played. But my issue comes when I start seeing commentators speak about a person who actually played the game and has his opinion to be had. That's my issue. Here I am, no different than anybody else, that the overarching theme is we all want our opinions to matter or want our opinions to be heard. And that's no different than what I've been able to do with my independently owned IP, 4th and 1, Funky Friday, I Am Iconic Live Tour. This has been the content that has been pushed in media. Let's talk about the LeBron, that, the Cams, the Odell, the Roger Federer's, the Serena Williams, the Michael Jordans, the Kobe's, the this, that. And they don't have nothing to justify that outside of, oh, I have a journalism degree. And I'm not saying that that's an issue. But when a person who actually lived it, prepared for it, played it, did it at a hot level. Now that's discredited by poking fun at the person himself. Almost to say like, shut the fuck up. You don't know what the hell you talking about. I'm like, hell, I played 11 years in the NFL, a league MVP, Heisman Trophy winner, five-star athlete coming out of high school. If anybody can talk about this matter, whether right or wrong, it's still subjective and it's still heavily opinionated. Who can? I mean, let's not be no fools here. We're getting information from people who've never played this game. But at the same time, when I sit up here and say, you know what? Let me say something about the state of football right now, in my opinion. My intentions was never to suppress the talent of Dak Prescott, Brock Parody, Jared Goff, or Tua Tonga Valoa. But the facts are what the facts are. Whether I play another snap in the NFL ever again, trust me. I will be straight. The work has already been done. The proof has been in the pudding. The truth of the matter is this. As I start taking this media space very serious, I can do what you've been able to do. And that's give your opinions about different sports topics. The reality is you couldn't do what I do. Or in this case, what I did. But when I say stuff like that, oh, that's Cam's ego. I'm in a time where I feel more liberated than I've ever have because I have the freedom and I am independent. They can't say, oh man, my offensive line sucks. Oh man, I don't have the receiving core. Oh man, I don't get the, the same push that these particular people do because they have to protect something. Other sources, and I've done that for far too long. Be it sponsorships, protecting organizations, or flat out, protecting coaches and players. Now I can really live in my truth and I'm still making money. I'll tell you, come to fellowship, come buy one of these goofy ass hats that you keep talking about. Come watch or subscribe to one of my YouTube channels. Come be a part of, you know, an experience of a lifetime. December 19th, I am Iconic Live Tour. These are things that Cam Newton is really doing right now without the game of football. And I can honestly tell you this, the game of football has been great to me. And whether I play another down or not, I'm still going to be straight. But I can honestly say, I use the game of football. The game of football didn't use me. One finger, one pinky, one thumb, one love.